Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on Cruel Seas, which is the recently released uh, coastal naval game from Warlord Games. Um, I've got really mixed feelings about this, I have to admit. Um, so I'm going to try to start with being by being positive, very positive about it. I, w I would um, highly recommend this game as a game, um, and I would encourage you to buy it. But um, I would do so whilst warning you um, to um, beware a little bit of it, to to um, have some reservations. Um, I, I pre-ordered this game um, as soon as I saw that uh, Warlord were going to um, release it. I pre-ordered it, I think that was back in September, and it arrived, um, I think it was the first week of December. So Warlord had um, clearly um, uh, timed it to coincide with Christmas really. I'm sure a lot of people got this as a Christmas present. Um, but I, I, um, I, I was really kind of tempted by this game. Um, as you know I'm a big uh, fan of naval wargaming. Um, I've never never wargamed um, coastal naval games though and there is a big um, difference really in in feel um, a, a lot of naval wargamers wouldn't be interested in playing coastal vessels um, much of the appeal of naval wargaming really lies in uh, the the detail of um, ships, armor, um, all the all the different specs, the armor, the the weaponry that it's carry, the ship is carrying, um, its performance, its speed, um, its kind of cruise efficiency, all that kind of thing, um, and how each individual ship um, plays off against. An, an opponent, um, an, an, an enemy ship. Um, so that could be either historically based or hypothetically based. Um, so you could you could have what if scenarios of uh, how one ship matched up against another and that kind of thing if they had fought one another. Um, coastal um, games are, are very different, um, but that's not to say that I'm not. Um, attracted to them as well, but they they remind me more of um, something like a, uh, an aerial combat game, for instance, something like um, uh, Wings of Glory or Check Your Six, those kind of games. All things that um, I'm very fond of as well. Um, so the so the so it, so I had an appetite for it from whichever direction you want to approach this game. Because um, I like I like aerial combat games um, where you have fast moving um, uh, planes normally, but in this case vessels um, whipping around on the tabletop and um, shooting one another up with um, a much lighter armament than you would get on a typical battleship. Um, so machine guns and heavy machine guns and uh, light cannon, that kind of thing. Um, and I had I had previously um, considered buying Warlords, uh, what's it called, Blood Red Skies, I believe, the aerial combat game that I think came out around um, the beginning of 2018. Um, I knew I I know that it was uh, available at Salute. And I was thinking of picking it up there, um, but in that case, I held off. I didn't pre-order it. I held off and waited to see what the reviews of it were going to be like. And in the case of Blood Red Skies, um, not all the reviews that I I saw were favourable. I mean, in particular, 
um, the models themselves um, were a little bit substandard. The plastic on them was a bit bendy, um, so um, you had to reshape quite a few of the plane's wings and so on. And um, I didn't like the aesthetics of the game either. Um, it had this sort of novel um, approach to the flying stands for the planes um, in that they were hint they were sort of on a hinge so that you could you could point the model of the plane up down or level but that that didn't indicate whether the plane was climbing diving or flying level it indicated um something else uh, whether well i can't remember exactly what it was but um it meant that a lot of the bombers um, you would play with them pointing at quite a steep angle downwards or upwards. Totally kind of unrealistic attitude for those heavier planes to take. And something, something about it just put me off. And um, another thing was the, uh, with, with plane models, um, you really need to decorate them with decals or paint the insignia on them, which um, in the scale that those planes came in I didn't feel uh, confident enough to do and um, the decals had to be sourced outside of Warlord Games to begin with and um, I, I, I noticed that quite a few purchasers were unhappy with that in reviews as well um, so I had all that in mind when I pre-ordered Cool Seas but in the case of Cool Seas I was um, aware that there might be some shortcomings with it, shall we say, given Warlord's previous history, but I was sort of happy to um, tolerate those shortcomings um, because I was so keen to get this game and play with it. Now, um, as you may guess from my hesitancy and so on, I... Um, I did find a number of shortcomings. Um, I, I'm still pleased with this purchase. I would still recommend it to you. But um, I think some of the shortcomings were avoidable and um, don't show Warlord games up in a very good light, really. Um, and I think, I think a, lot, a lot is down to their rush to get this out in time for Christmas, I think. Okay, so um, I, I went for um, this box set, which is, I think it's described, yeah, the Cruel Seas Gold Collection. Now this cost me, the contents of this box, cost me 120 pounds. Um, so with that um, price, and with the description of it as a gold collection, um i would say um it is not value for money um i'm not saying that it's not a game worth getting i'm saying um uh have have double thoughts about purchasing this gold collection now um i've already un i've already unpacked it i've played i've painted up the models i've played several games so it's a little bit of a a clutter in here but i want to show you the kind of things that um you get with it. Right, so principally um, you get a hardback oh, sorry the lights shining off of this um, it's a bit glossy you get a hardback uh, version of the rules okay it comes in this sleeve and this is the book itself now um, the actual copy of the rules, if you don't go for this gold edition, is a soft cover, which you also get. So you get a duplication of the rules. So you get this soft cover edition. Now, I, I find um, I'm much happier with hardback rules. Um, soft cover get, vet, get worn out very quickly. Um, I much prefer rules that are hard, hard covered bound in hardcover such as uh, bolt action from warlord games black powder 
Um, this is a little bit flimsy to my, my point of view, which is why I went, partly why I went for this gold um, collection, because I wanted a hard copy book. Now, this is um, signed, it's a collector's edition, so it's signed, it's number 190 of 200, signed by John Stallard himself, the uh, author of the walls. So that's fine and dandy, it's not the reason uh, I went for it. I'm, I'm going to use this to play with. Um, I would say that the binding on this is is not um, particularly good quality. Um, so what I've actually paid for is John Stallard's autograph rather than having a, a very kind of robust set of rule books that uh, are practical in a wargaming situation. Um, I don't know if you heard let me just open some of the pages in silence and see if you can hear, pick this up. I don't know if you can hear that, but you get that kind of creaking noise where the binding is coming a little bit... There, there was a good one there. The binding is already coming a little bit loose. Um, you can expect that if you kind of open a book up and stress its binder, but um, that's just laying it flat. Um, so I'm a little bit hesitant, wary about that. Um, the reason I've got it out of its sleeve, this thing, is that if you do keep it in this for protection, it's virtually impossible to get it out again. And um, I've, I've noticed only in the first couple of um, times that I've retrieved it from that sleeve with great difficulty it's already beginning to peel back this um, sort of vinyl covering there um, so I'm not going to risk that again I'm going to keep it out of its binder um, so from a kind of quality point of view a little bit upset with that um, f f far more um, critical though is the fact that this came out I, as I say I got this really it was um, released at the beginning of December so I got it in the first week of December two weeks went by and um, Warlord had to release an errata okay so this this errata was released and it's downloadable on the Warlord Games website um, it was released before Christmas so within about a fortnight of the book itself being being published um, now what they've done is they've um, they've they've given you the entire page where there are errata on with the um, the errata highlighted in yellow but there is something like, I can't remember exactly, there's either 10 or, or a dozen, I think it's 10 pages of errata. And I noticed um, when I read through this book, first of all, um, that there are quite a lot of typos in it. Um, that's just, to me, is just um, an indication that something hasn't been proofread um, particularly uh, assiduously. And it bugs me, but... Um, with with the sort of drop in standards that you get in 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 the publishing industry in general and in unfor unfortunately in war games publications in particular um i've sort of come to expect it um there were also a number of um lines that, that didn't make a great deal of sense when i read them so i thought the english was a little bit um uh skew with in it and um, sure enough, in this errata, in these errata, they have corrected it. Um, so um, neither of those two th two things kind of worry me particularly. It would it, I, I wouldn't have to kind of refer to this um, in conjunction with uh, the courses. They just would be courses rule book. They would just be a clarification of the rule book, but. What they have in here is also a lot of um, additional um, sentences um, g 
giving you um, examples of how to play certain situations and so on. So in other words, there is this is a this is a new addition. It's not just errata. It's already a second edition in a way of the rules, a partial second edition. Um, a good example of that, for instance, would be the rules for collisions. Now, I've played a couple of games of this already, as I say, and collisions are quite common. Um, the, the models move around at quite a pace and um, you, you can easily collide uh, vessels with one another. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit more in a moment when I show you um, some of the mechanisms of the rules and so on. But just to say at this point that um, when the collisions occurred, I wasn't entirely sure what would happen. If one, if one ship literally comes to a halt against another, um, what are you supposed to do in the next turn? Um, and in fact, what they've, what they've added in here um, is an extra rule that you move them, you move each model ship five centimeters and can angle it up to 30 degrees in order for the two ships to become disentangled. Um, so in other words, where you would have to kind of, with the, with this original rule book, you would have to kind of make up your own house rule type of thing. Now there is a, an official way of handling the collision. Um, and there are lots of other examples of that kind of thing. So this isn't just errata, it's an addendum. Um, and I, I, as you probably know from some of my previous videos, that really, really does anger me. Um, for it to happen within a fortnight of the, the book being published and possibly before a lot of purchasers have actually even opened up their box because they would have probably had it as a Christmas present and unwrapped it on Christmas Day. This came out before Christmas, so their present is already superseded by... Uh, supplemental kind of issue of a lot of the rules. Um, I won't go into all the examples of that, but that is just one example of the collision rule, uh, and, I, and, and I think that is a real black mark against Warlord Games. Um, let me just show you some of the other things. I've got, I've got all the models and so on separate. I'm going to show you those in a moment. Um, but in this gold collection, you get um, plume markers, which I think are quite nice. Um, I can use these in other naval games as well, Spl splash markers. Um, they come into play if uh, the heavier weaponry on the models um, misses. And it gives, it gives the... Uh, the ship a kind of the, the target ship a disadvantage in that the in that the enemy are kind of honing in homing in on 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 him um, if there's three or more on the on the vessel you get this kind of cotton woolly sort of stuff which is quite nice but um, I don't know I've got lots of this kind of stuff already um, but it, it looks good, it looks good, so I'm not complaining. Um, for smoke and fire and so on. Um, I'll come back to these in a moment. But you have um, wake markers, so you have different sizes of vessels and they leave behind them a different amount of wake and that will depend as well. How much of this is behind the ship depends on the speed that the ship is going. Um, you get cards for each of the model models in the box um, and they have on them um, these kind of red clips um, which you move along and you keep a track of uh, how much damage your vessel has taken so for instance this is the card for 
a Type 2 Vosper motor torpedo boat and it has 40 hull points. So as it takes hits, you move these markers uh, down until it gets to zero and then the ship is sunk. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, so you get hundreds, not hundreds, but you get far more than you need of these um, markers. And I suspect that is partly because they are quite a flimsy type of card. Um, they tear and rip very easily when, as you, as you put, punch them out of the... Uh, um, there you can see, you can see probably on that one. There's, that one's already taken some damage just from just from removing it from the um, the card. So these are probably all intended to be spares. But um, I I would much rather have these have been a kind of hardier material that was going to last. Um, a bit like the uh, it's similar to the kind of markers you get in Zombie Side if you any of you are familiar with that. Um, so you get lots of wake market markers. I mean, I've punched out all the ones I need for all the vessels that come in this kit. And you can see I've still got lots of surplus. Um, so that is probably intended um, for if you purchase any more models. OK, um, again, I'm going to I'm going to come back to that in a minute. There's another spare one in there. Um, you do get some paper, they're not decals, they're just paper prints of um, pennants and uh, so on. There's a British and a German in here. Um, so you, if you wanted to, you could cut around those and uh, decorate your models with them. Um, it does mean, however, that you would have to rig your vessels in some way or attach them to very thin wire. Um, I was thinking about doing that and then I thought no I wasn't going to bother um, uh, but I might I might get around to putting them on the vessels I don't know but but um, again way more than you need way way more than you need um, you get lots of tokens I've already cut out these ones which are for the critical hits so you get things like crew hit engine hit fire oh, I can't remember them all you get lots of other tokens for things like uh, smoke screens, uh, what have we got here, depth charges, uh, radar, gun director. These are all things that you can um, punch, punch them out and you can put them on these cards to show that you've paid for, you put them here in additional equipment for instance, so that you can show that you've, get, you've purchased the gun director or you've purchased radar. Um, de-gaussing gear, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I won't go into that other than to say that um, it's like using a little kind of mini tray and you have, if you've got too many things balanced on that, they, they you know, they go all over the place. And um, I found the in the games that I've played so far, Rather than putting these um, critical hit things, which are the ones I punched out, onto the uh, card, it's much better to put them beside the ship and have a few takens beside the ship, and then you can see exactly what the status of the ship is. Um, you get a playing surface, which is just, uh, I think it's four foot square, uh, playing surface, which is just a, um, a sort of laminate paper type of thing. Um, quite useful but I've got my own uh, C mats and so on so I wouldn't want to use this but it is a useful um, if you're just getting into naval wargaming. It's got sort of the uh, Atlantic on one side and then a more kind of Pacific kind of colour on the other. Uh, Right, I'm going to talk about dice in a minute. Um, talk about that in a minute as well. These are the critical hit tokens. Um, it's a nice colour, they're nice design. They remind me of the old kind of Commando comics or something like that. The kind of artwork on them. Um, you get lots of torpedoes. Uh, you get, I think you get 16 torpedo markers, which are 
important in the game. Um, I've painted these up um, already. That's one of them there. Um, they have a important role in the game. Um, and you get another kind of couple of card um, tokens that you can punch out um, which are very useful um, if you don't have the models. Um, there's one for a tanker there, uh, a sort of destroy tanker on the other side. You have little bits that can represent coastline and shoreline, gun emplacements, uh, destroyed there, operational there. Um, these are boys, so if you're playing a, a, a game on a six foot by four table and you only need a playing surface of say four foot by four you can use the boys to mark out the corners you've got these mines which I think are great um, uh, to, to delineate minefields not sure what these life rafts are they might just be debris to indicate where a ship has sunk um, you get two planes you get a uh, Stuco and a Beaufort fighter um, I don't know whether they're available yet, but you can buy the models. Um, Warlord have already announced um, some uh, new new releases, and they're certainly in the in another box set for the German fleet and the British fleet. There are these models um, as planes, but I can't make out. I'm I'm waiting to see. I'm certainly going to get the box set. Um, but I can't make out from the images whether they actually come with flying stands or not. Um, I hope they do, but um, they've somehow on the illustrations they've kind of been airbrushed out. This is another um, punch out, and you can see they've got the same as that on that mat. They've got Pacific design on one side, and uh, a, more, a more kind of uh, Atlantic setting on the other. And these are very good for um, uh, sort of rocks, reefs, uh, islands. So you can have an island in the middle of the table or in the corners or on the edges. Um, they're very good, I think. Um, that does kind of bring me on, in a way, to... Um, I'm uh, getting a little bit out of order here, but um, one, one of the immediate things when you play this game is that you you want to kind of expand. Um, as It's a coastal game. You can't get around um, the fact that you're going to need to put some uh, terrain down on the table, unlike a, a normal kind of a larger scale naval battle. Um, you are kind of almost obliged to have some terrain on the table. Um, I've already got a lot of kind of coastal scenery for my earlier games, other games, um, so I'm already kind of set up with that. Other than that I haven't got any um, World War II um, type buildings to put on it, such as gun emplacements and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm already thinking what can I get to um, enhance the game in that way to make the make it look more visually appealing, but also elements on the on the shoreline that are going to um, interact interact with the vessels that you're playing with, um, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you some of the models now. Right, so this is um, a merchant tanker. That comes in the box set. Now this is um, free in inverted commas um, in that um, when you pay £120 for the gold, I keep forgetting what it's called, gold collection uh, box, you get this free model of a merchant tanker which would normally retail for £18. Um, now I like it, it's got a lot of character. Um, I've painted it up as a bit of a kind of rust bucket. Um, so I've kind of weathered it quite a lot and I think it's got a lot of character as I say. Um, 
it it does come with um, excuse me a moment I've just got to find them again yeah it does require a little bit of assembly and um, it's up to you in a way whether you choose for instance to arm it so it does come with this um, gun with some crew um, now there are various um, YouTube videos up already um, little tutorials on how to paint this and uh, how to put the pieces together and um, I've noticed that what people have done is um, at the front of the ship there's a little hole drilled there and um, people have tended to put this um, I can't remember what the technical name for these are, but, but essentially they're kind of vents that allow air into the lower spaces of the ship. Um, so there's quite a lot of them at the back of the ship there um, that I've put in. But I didn't, I, I thought that that looked really odd, really strange to have one of those vents right at the front of the front of the vessel um, in exactly the place where the waves are going to break over the the prow of the ship and um, go straight down in I didn't think they were going to get much air but they were going to get a lot of seawater if you put one there so I th I thought that was inappropriate um, and I did wonder whether um, that hole was there um, to give you the option of putting this um, gun into it um, because it has got as you probably see on the bottom it has got the right size little plug to fit into that that uh, hole um, but you but it's impossible to put it in there isn't room um, to actually fit it in there because of the winch that's in the way or uh, molded onto the into the into the piece you physically cannot get that in there so whether that is kind of some kind of design uh, flaw or not I don't know um, as on one of the videos that I was saying tells you how to go about painting it what the guy has done is put the gun onto that space at the back there um, now that meant that must have meant that he sounded that down or, or, or drilled or, or filed it away so that it was a flat surface that he could glue it there and that's fair enough um, that, uh, in a way I would think that is a more appropriate place to have armament if you're going to arm a merchant tanker um, but you also get these two winches um, now I've chosen not to put them on the vessel at all because uh, I was puzzling about where these would go um, they look as though they're intended to go there were two of them, one to go on that space where the, the other chap put the gun and the second one to go in that space there. Um, except that if that were the case, why has the sculptor um, portrayed timber work over that space? Um, why, why go to all that bother when you're going to cover it up with a winch? And what what... I can I can more understand a winch there because it might possibly be used to um, draw things out of from this uh, hatchway here, but there makes no sense at all. Um, it's not it's not serving a function as far as I can see, uh, unless you're going maybe if you're going to tow something, uh, I don't know. Um, but I, I just gave up on those in the end, decided not to use them. And the same with, um, you get two uh, pennants or flags. Um, I don't know whether a merchant tanker would fly colours and it means drilling in and uh, Y2. So didn't bother with those either. Um, but um, yeah, the other thing is, I don't know if you can see, but um, it's bent a little bit. 
Um, you can't see it so easily on this felt map, but um, there's a very definite bend in it. And um, the other the other video that, again that you might be able to find, I think his name was John Harrington. Um, he he suggests um, laying the model down into into a tray of hot water or warm warmish water, um, allowing the resin to soften and then to put it into cold water immediately and flatten it out and it will keep that flat shape. Now I didn't realise you could do that with resin. Um, I only saw the video after I painted the model up. Um, I, kn I knew you could do it with plastic and in fact that is that, that going back to the um, Blood Red Skies, that's what a lot of people were compelled to do with the models for the planes in Blood Red Skies. Um, but uh, I didn't, as I say, I didn't realise you could do it with resin. So, not a big, not a big issue. But eighteen pounds for this, um, just about, just about value for money. Um, yeah, that's maybe that's another thing to say at this point that um, there are coastal war games rules out there, coastal naval game rules out there. And there are ship models out there as well, but they've never been combined as far as I know. This is the first time that the rules and the models have been combined. And Warlord have been a little bit canny in that they've produced a scale which is one three hundredth scale, which is not... Most models are kind of more like one three hundred and fifty if you're going to get them of a similar size. Um, so they've kind of tried to make a complete package so that you're compelled to kind of go down their route and buy only their models but there are cheaper models out there i would suggest um that you might be able to purchase and adapt for this game um yeah another thing on that point as well um i won't go back to the rule book but um there are lots of uh, what you might be able to, we might describe as fleet lists, a bit like you have army lists in bolt action. So whether they are going to continue to expand their range of models or not, I don't know. But um, one of one of the sort of uh, kind of deficiencies of the game is that you it, it it will really it will get really tedious in the end if you were just going to put put down a flat piece playing surface and have your models on it and just um play them off against one another game after game so you've got to kind of um invent scenarios and invent a narrative and that's not a big problem except that it does mean that you have to kind of introduce more and more models and so on and and if you've got if you've gone down this scale, you're you're going to limit you're going to be limited to what Warlord are going to put on on offer in the future. But one of the obvious that there are two there are two very um, prominent actions that that occurred in the Second World War um, that uh, involved vessels of this small size. One of them was the tragedy of uh, the um, loss of life during Exercise Tiger, which was um, a, a sort of um, an exercise where they were rehearsing the D-Day landings down at Slapton Sands in Devon. And um, the troop ships um, were... Um, sailed out of harbours in Devon but went went sailed around um the, the Weymouth area in order to give the troops the experience of a, of a relatively long sea journey before they were landed on the beaches and then they were supposed to kind of land at Slapton Sands some of them did under genuine kind of, there was it was it was live ammunition that they were using um so they were landing under genuine um live gunfire um, which was mistimed, so a lot of them were actually shelled as they landed because the coastal bombardment had been delayed half an hour, but no one had told the uh, no one had told the troops who were landed. So they did. They, there were some casualties inflicted 
um, by that. But worse still was that four German um, Schnell boats actually intercepted the landing craft, um, which were large vessels. They weren't these sort of small things with the uh, the, the door at the front that drops down. They were lar They were holding a large number of troops and sank uh, a couple of the uh, the vessels. And the, all in all, there's something like three or four thousand um, American servicemen lost their lives in it. And um, that's not really the kind of um, uh, thing you want to make a war game out of, really. I don't think so, anyway. Um, so that's sort of out of the out of the um, list of options. And then the other one, of course, is the um, raid of um, HMS Campbellton on the docks at Saint Nazaire, um, which involved a uh, a destroyer, um, a Lend-Lease destroyer called HMS Campbelltown, which had been um, refitted and cut down to make it look like a German vessel. And it approached the uh, dry dock at um, Saint Nazaire in darkness, um, having to um, sneak its way past as many coastal gun emplacements as it could um, and then rammed the dock. It was packed full of explosive, and uh, the it was carrying a contingent of commandos who leapt out and uh, did as much damage as they could to the, uh, the gate mechanisms and the and the pump houses and so on of the dock, and uh, generally made a nuisance of themselves. And they were then supposed to um, uh, embark onto lots of fair miles who were escorting the and the uh, HMS Campbellton and make their way back to England but most of the fair miles were um, blown to pieces um, uh, by the coastal defences um, so the commandos who survived um, uh, fought their way through the town but um, in the main were either killed or taken prisoner um, I think it's about four of them managed to make their way to Spain um, but that's, so that is a really exciting um, scenario that you might be able to play if you were able to kind of uh, model the docks, the gun emplacements, and so on. Um, and it's a lot to it's a lot to expect because there was um, submarine pens as well, um, and most of the, the 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 playable elements of the raid. Um, took place on land um, rather than the the actions of the the vessels. So it's kind of a suitable uh, scenario to try and emulate with this set of rules. Um, and indeed, to get back to my point about the size of these models, um, in these fleet lists at the back of the rules, there is uh, an HMS Campbellton. Um, so whether Warlord are intending to bring that out in the future or not, I don't know. But this is one on the three hundredth scale, and HMS Campbellton, as I say, was a destroyer. It was 309 feet long, which means the model is going to be over a foot long um, in one three hundredth scale. So I'm wondering about the practicalities of that. Um, why have why have Warlord put HMS Campbellton into the rules, deliberately mentioned it, when they may never be able to um, produce a scenario or a game or even a model um, to use. So, a um, bit of a mystery. It's kind of um, like um, the plans are a little bit nebulous for the way that this, this game is going to expand. Anyway, I'm going to show you the rest of the, uh, the models now. Okay, now this is another sort of freebie. Um, this is the equivalent of the uh, free figure that you get uh, with um, bolt action rules or black powder if you buy them direct from uh, Warlord Games. Um, it's a little model of a, a U-boat surfacing. Um, metal rather than plastic or resin um, it's nice enough 
um, except that um, it might lead people to kind of it might give people a misconception about what the game Cruel Seas is all about because there is a section dealing with uh, submarines in the in the rules but they're very kind of peripheral to the game not usually included um, and the rules for them are very uh, uh, I mean it actually says in the book that um, they're not they're not uh, Cruel Seas isn't intended to involve submarines um, uh, it does make me wonder as well <laughs> um, as you can see there's there's a two figures manning a gun um, hardly you know they've got out they've got out of the submarine and they're manning the gun um, hardly before the things out of the water um, so a bit curious but anyway you know free so you can't uh, you can't complain you you get you get that with the rules so you don't have to buy the gold collection set to uh, obtain it okay so next up i've got six um <clears throat> german uh s boats here now um you only get four with the uh gold collection box set the other two um, came free with the December issue of War Games Illustrated. Um, and there was a little bit of an issue with that in itself. Um, I, I think these models are great, fantastic. Um, really enjoyed painting them up. Um, there is a painting guide that comes with the walls as well. I didn't show you that. Um, and there's also um, a labelling, let's see if I can get it in front of the camera, you get um, for both the British and the German S-boat you get the an illustration of the sprue with uh, annotation of what each piece is. Um, that was published by Warlord on their website when the um, when the free sprue came out with War Games Illustrated, um, so it's available online. Because um, it is a little bit difficult to put them together. Um, in particular, some of the I think it was the uh, the quad gun at the rear of the S100. You've got two types here. You've got the S100 and the S38. Um, they're armed differently. Um, that model at the back there of the quad gun at the back, quad uh, 20 millimeter, um, has got like the crew um, separate and you have to sort of fit it in underneath and glue it together. It doesn't go together terribly easily. Um, and on that subject as well, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to show you, but the figures themselves in, in pla these are plastic models now. The figures themselves are just blobs. There's no, there's no discernible detail on them at all. Unlike the metal uh, figures for the U-boat and the trawler, where you can make out life jackets and um, helmets and so on, and and you can attempt a little bit of a painting, a little bit of detail like flesh colours and so on on them. There's abs I don't think there's any point in even bothering with those because they're literally just little dimples of um, of plastic. Um, the, the, I think it's that John Harrington again. I'm not sure. Might might have been another YouTube channel, but it says you need in order to paint them. You need a if you're going to attempt it. You need a steady hand and a fine brush. But um, I think more than that, you need a Bloody good ima imagination to even imagine where the hands and so on are on them. There's just nothing on them. So I left them on these on these particular models. I left them grey, um, just hoping that they'll blend into the background and won't be noticed. Um, but that's not the main the, the main issue with the the freebie pair that came with. Um, uh, War Games Illustrated. Let's let's put most of them in the background there and just deal with one.
particular model. Let's take an S100. Zoom in a little bit on it if I can. Right, so um, the way the game works is that uh, every vessel has a different size. You have um, the main ones are large, medium and small. And the S boat is, is a medium vessel. So it has this medium wake marker. Um, now you put, basically what you do is that you also get a lot of dice. The, the, I've got two points I want to make here and I'm trying to make them simultaneously, which is obviously impossible. But um, in the in the box set you get loads of dice you get six sided dice which you need to play the game um, most war gamers have presumably got six sided dice so they're um, a nice little addition but there are any relevance really you get two d10s because you roll d10s um, for um, damage and so on for rolling to see if you get a hit uh, rather um, again, most wargamers are going to have D10s around the house. Um, but what you do need are dice, because this is a, a sort of dice-activated game, which it, it, they say is... Um, uh, a reproduction of the, of the bolt-action dice. So you've got... Uh, here, I've got German dice and I've got British dice. Now, anyone who does play bolt action, and, and I think what they've, what Warlord have tried to do is kind of um, appeal to their um, very large and very loyal bolt action um, audience, really, and try and persuade them that um, they will take to this game because it, is, it has a very similar kind of mechanism to bolt action. But it doesn't have anything of the sort. Um, they they offer you these dice. Um, you can't buy them, as far as I can see. You can't buy them separately. Um, so unlike in bolt action, where um, you need the dice because um, unlike real d sixes, the the dice in bolt action have orders on them. So you take them out of a bag, which is you do with this. Each model on the table will have a dice. So this Schnell boat will have a German dice, which you put into a bag and you draw it at random. But you just draw it and then you draw a German dice and then you say, right, I'm going to activate that S boat. But you don't give it an order. You don't tell it it's going to fire or... Um, run or whatever in the same way that you're doing bolt action you just put the dice against the um against the uh against the vessel to show that you've activated it um i mean obviously you can use any dice you want as long as they're the same size you, you what you need is dice that you can't when you're feeling around in the bag you can't tell the difference between the british and the german dice you can use any dice you want a bit like in um sword and spear just get some equivalent size d6s and put them in a bag um there is there is absolutely no point to this it's it's misleading to to say that um to, to draw a kind of comparison with bolt action um it's just a random draw in the same way that um sword and spear is um it's not it's not the same mechanism as bolt action at all and as i say with the um with the free with the free uh models that you get in war games illustrated obviously they don't come with dice you only have enough dice you only have one dice per model in the gold collection set and you can't buy them separately. So if you're going to play with the models that you got from War Games Illustrated, you're going to have to get your own, you're going to have to source your own dice anyway um, and discard these. They become an irrelevance. Um, equally, 
uh, you only get. I don't think I've shown you this. Have I? Yeah, I have shown you this. So, far. yeah, you get a you get a card per vessel in the box. So, you get a card for. Uh, you get two S one hundreds because there are two S one hundreds in the in the that come with the box, and you need these to play the game. These are crucial to keep score, keep track of your hull points, and so on. Um, you don't get one again for the S100 that comes with the free in the in the magazine. Um, so if you're going to play with the, the models out of the magazine, you're going to have to photocopy these because they're not downloadable off of the Warlord Games website, or they aren't at the moment. But what they did do um, is download copies of the wake markers which was completely unnecessary because as I've shown you already you get a surplus of these in the box you get more than you need more than you've got models um, so th there was some kind of um, failure of communication there I think between um, Warlord and uh, and War Games Illustrated um, you know it's again it's another kind of indicator of how how ill-planned the whole release of the uh, the game and the model and the models were because the the free models in War Games Illustrated were clearly meant to kind of um, excite uh, potential purchasers. Um, they came out just before the release of the game, um, so to sort of hype it all up before Christmas. But they didn't really think it through. Um, in terms of the plastic of the models that came free that they were slightly lighter kind of plastic and they did inevitably there was a little bit of damage on them um, not the ones in the box but the one in the magazine so if I show you the uh, S38 again this is a model that came out of the, the box and this is the model that came uh, free with the magazine and I know that instantly because that there's a little raised area there that had broken off and got lost um, in the in the in the magazine one this plastic is a little bit lighter um, and I, th I think they're the probably the best thing that I've ever known War Games Illustrated give away for free but um, I would still say don't judge the actual models that you get with the game on the basis of what you might have picked up free because the plastic is a slightly inferior quality in the magazine um, anyway let's let's talk a little bit about um, the game mechanism so as I say what you do is you activate your boat um, it can move and there's, it's got three speeds full combat speed and slow speed um, now the distances on here have no um, bearing on the distance you're going to move you need one of these um, cutout rulers um, so if the ship is moving at 13 knots or if the model is moving 13 knots you simply move it 13 I think it's centimeters along there and then if that was um, 13 knots would be slow speed say every every um, every boat has a different speed so in this case slow speed for an S boat would be 14 knots combat speed 28 full 42 and you can you can up or you can go up one level or down one level in each each turn um, but having gone say at combat speed I would then place this wake marker underneath and it just gives me a visual indication of how fast the ship is going because that is um, relevant to targeting it and being able to hit it and also for its own crew to be able to aim accurately at enemy vessels and then you put the, the dice on the back um, to show that it's moved. The wake markers do also have a bearing on um, models that have got inexperienced crew because you can have veteran crew uh, regular crew and inexperienced crew if an inexperienced vessel goes over the wake marker 
of another vessel that can um, throw it off of uh, off of line temporarily um, making it go in a kind of an erratic fashion um, but that's only if you've got inexperienced crew on the vessel that crosses the wake marker um, for every there, there are three speed levels okay um, as I say slow combat and uh, full for each each of those in the case of of uh, the S boat would be a 14 centimeter move uh, as you come to the end of each 14 centimeters the first the first move you have to make is 14 centimeters in a straight line um, when you get to the end of that 14 centimeters you are then allowed to angle your ship and this or your vessel this has got a 45 degree turn angle so I could then um, adjust from the stern the attitude of that vessel 40 up to 45 degrees then I would have to move it another 14 centimeters before I had the option of angling it again so in any if it's going at full speed in a um, single turn this particular vessel has the has the ability to turn 135 degrees um, every time that it is eligible for a turn it doesn't have to turn but at every point where it is eligible for a turn it is allowed to fire any or all of its weapons on board so you can move fire the rear gun for instance move again get closer to another vessel and fire the the gun at the prow and so on um, but you can only fire each individual gun model once per turn um, so you can you can literally race past something give it a blast with its with your gun at the prow and then go past it and then have a kind of tail end shot at it with the rear gun um, all the guns you need to understand um, their um, how much they can bear so the front gun can can um, bear 270 degrees there's a machine gun which isn't um, uh, depicted on the vessel uh, there are two machine guns in fact that aren't depicted um, and they can rotate 360 degrees um, the 20 millimeter gun at the front can only um, bear 270 degrees in that direction and then the twin gun I think it's a twin 20 millimeter um, in the center that can also uh, bear 360 degrees but again in the errata as, as they call it but addendum as I call it there is an additional rule that um, even if a gun can bear 360 degrees it can't shoot down the length of the ship um, because that would damage its own crew members and vessel so even though it's apparently 360 degrees it's not you have to still have to look at the line of sight and the line of fire and avoid firing across um, got the crew members and the gun on your vessel so it's effectively only got kind of it's got 180 degrees more or less that way and that way but it's not a true complete 360 degrees um, so that is another example of a rule that has been added um, after the after the production of the rules um, one of the other things I was curious to know and I don't think it matters too much but it's the sort of thing you have to come to an agreement with your opponent is when it's made the first third of its movement and then um, it's allowed to turn if it wants to can it fire either before it's turned and or after or does it have to be one or the other I don't think it matters um, but it's not it's not made clear um, there's also the torpedoes which um, you have to keep track uh, an S boat has four torpedoes um, it's got two ready to be loaded into the tubes and two presumably in the tubes already um, and let me find let me find my torpedo markers again 
Right, so um, you can only fire a torpedo at the end of your movement. So wherever you come to, wherever your movement comes to an end. And you've got a 30 degree um, arc of fire, as it were, on either side of the vessel. So you can either fire two torpedoes at once or just a single one. And you can, you can aim that at anything up to 30 degrees from the line of uh, the length of the ship. Um, it stays there until the next turn. And then when you activate this vessel, you also activate the torpedo, which then moves 40, cent 40 centimetres, which is a hell of a distance. Um, and that will take place for the next three turns until it potentially hits an enemy vessel. Um, so your, your, the, the kind of parent vessel of the torpedo will have moved away, but you're activating this at the same time. And that's where I really like, um, it's one of the things I like about bolt action, is um, it does become critical. If you've, got, if you've got a torpedo heading towards a target, let's bring the, the tanker back on again for a second. If you've got a torpedo heading towards the target, and it's very close to hitting it. Um, who draws the dice out the bag first of all is going to be crucial, because the if you, if the British draw, the tank has moved out of the way. But if the Germans draw, they're clearly going to activate that mother vessel immediately in order to get the opportunity for the torpedo to strike the the vessel. And I think that's a really fun element of the um, of the game. Uh, but what is curious and it's another example of how they've got the original rule book wrong is that uh, torpedoes and it does state quite clearly in the original rule book torpedoes cannot um, strike small and medium vessels so a torpedo is useless against a motor torpedo boat it just goes it's got such a shallow draft it just goes underneath it they can only strike large large vessels such as this tanker but in the original rules um, they give for the, for the details of the torpedo strikes see if I can find it yeah just put in front of you this is the original rule book and this is the torpedo torpedo to hit table and you can see on this that it's got target size tiny small or barge roll minus get take minus two off your to hit uh, value on the d10 dice roll medium minus one and then large plus two but there is absolutely no point in those values because torpedoes can't hit anything smaller than a large vessel and in the um, in the addendum they've actually got torpedo to hit table remove tiny small or barge from the from the hit but they've still got medium presumably oh, I don't understand that I didn't understand that I thought it was only large but maybe I got the rules wrong but um, they've, they've certainly certainly got the table there's an inappropriate entry on the table in that one uh, So I think that's everything on the German. So I'm just going to show you the uh, the British vessels now. No, sorry, there was one other thing on the um, the S100 in particular. Uh, right now, the S100, the sprue um, is always used up entirely. There's no additional armament on the sprue um, so there's no opportunity even though they encourage you to make modifications and so on there is no opportunity you haven't got an alternative gun that you can place on the model and yet on the um, on the card here for the S100 it details that it's armed with a 37 millimeter semi-auto 
with the option to replace it with a quad 20 millimeter and that goes at the rear so they've they've got a third on the card they've got to look on the look down top down illustration of the vessel they've got a 37 millimeter um, semi-automatic gun at the back of the vessel whereas the model comes as you can see with a quad um, 20 millimeter so they've gone for the option to alter it but you're not given an alternative 37 millimeter semi-automatic cannon if you want to put it there um, and there's no as far as I can see there is no maybe in the future they're going to bring out um, additional sprues and so on there is there is a 37 millimeter semi-automatic on the S38 and there it is but if you wanted to put that onto the um, S100 you'd have to you'd have to leave that space spare um, so again uh, and, and you know that would mean that would mean purchasing surplus models um, so that that didn't make sense to me either but anyway as I say on to the British now okay so um, these are six Vospers these all come with the gold collection set um, so there are two versions there's the type one which is the three at the rear and the type two um, which is slightly heavier armed um, but doesn't have a rear firing other than the two machine guns on it doesn't have a rear firing weapon so the type one what's that at the back that's a twin 20 millimeter at the back and it's got a uh, oh hang on is it no it's a twin heavy machine gun at the back and at the front it's got a single 20 millimeter whereas the type 2 has got a twin 20 millimeter at the front um, so it's got one additional 20 millimeter in a in a sort of twin alignment um, they're a little bit less attractive to paint um, there's more kind of grey on them um, the, the German boats are different sort of shades of grey um, it's sort of like you can they're brightened up a little bit by the life life raft and the life belts and so on um, the masts on them are a little bit thick and uh, sort of heavy um, the actual vessels had far finer kind of uh, triangular type arrangements um, but they're still I, th I think they're still nice models um, so that's more or less that's more or less everything oh yeah with except to say these are small so they have a different wake uh, marker small rather than the German Chanel boats which are medium um, so the these are slightly slower um, but so easier to hit from the speed point of view but um, smaller so harder to hit from that point of view so the the two kind of the two vessels are uh, more or less kind of balanced in the game but if you're gonna if you're gonna get into this game um, unless you get hold of a large vessel such as the uh, the, the merchant tanker um, you're not going to be able to play the torpedo rules so you're gonna you're gonna I, I'm wondering who this game is going to appeal to really um, because they're, they're clearly kind of targeting their loyal fans the uh, the bolt action um, crew who are already um, you know kind of uh, loyal to Warlord games but who else are they going to kind of like attract that I don't think really they're going to appeal to naval war gamers um, unless those naval war gamers have got an additional interest in small scale the more sort of skirmish level type games at this of the, of, with ships and vessels of this size um, and there are some people like that such as myself but a lot of lot of naval war gamers just aren't interested in this 
area of naval wargaming. Um, and I don't think they're going to kind of um, uh, grow a new um, type of fan base, especially if um, the starter kind of game is really just going to revolve around motor torpedo boats because, as I say, the, the, the large sort of part of the fun of it for me playing these games is is the torpedo runs and so on and how how they work and also um, I think people are going to get bored with it if they're just playing on a flat surface without a lot of coastal terrain and islands and so on um, so those things plus the all the problems they've had with um, the publication and the and the kind of missing areas from the rules and so on and um, other minor things like the you know dice missing for uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering when you buy additional vessels whether they will come with these cards and with the dice I don't see how they can not really um, but if if you were to buy that merchant tanker separately, would it come with the merchant tanker card? Um, hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. So um, all in all, I would say um, I'm really looking forward to playing this game. I mean, another element of it is that I've started attending a war games club in Plymouth again now, and the, I've so far I've played two games of bolt action. Uh, one game of Congo there, um, but the games um, for a, in a war games club. This 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 game is ideal for a war games club. Is what I'm trying to say. It's nice and portable. Um, it's easy to pick up and play. The rules are fairly light and easy to learn. Um, so it's going to be ideal for that. But I, you can also play solo games. I mean, the games I've played so far have been solo. Uh, and they've turned out to be fun. Um, so it's it's got an appeal from that point of view, but I think what will happen is it will sort of, it will flame for a, lot, a little while, it will sort of flare up and enthusiasm for it will be, it'll be picked up by a lot of, um, especially gamers at war games clubs and shops and so on. Um, but they're, I think they're gonna rapidly get bored with it. Um, Unless, unless you, you're constantly kind of feeding that um, uh, appetite for expanding your fleets, for adding new vessels to it, um, for adding new scenarios in. Um, but anyway, that's 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 gone on quite a long time. But that's all my first impressions um, and a sort of cynical kind of review, really, of what you get in the gold collection. Um, so I'll stop at that point. I hope you've enjoyed that. And I think what I'll do is um, set up a game and play it in front of the camera um, as a sort of separate video because um, that my sort of battle reports and things tend to go on for a long time as well. So um, coming up in the not too distant future will be a run through of a, of a kind of solo game. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.